Thank you so much for this opportunity for UNICEF Nepal. I'll be representing on behalf of all the members here. And uh, today I'll be making the opening remarks. I'm uh, Abbas Maska, I did my PhD in Japan. And now I'm back in Nepal and working uh, for an organization, a nonprofit called Andriksha Pratishtha Nepal. I'm also the co POC for uh, UNICEF Nepal as well. Okay, so today I'll be talking about um, what ways we can generate ideas, what ways we can then generate the funds for emerging countries, especially countries like Nepal, who, who have to be dependent on the government, but then what if the government is not supporting in time? So we do know that government will support at a certain point, but what if it doesn't support in the beginning? What do we do? So um, one of the first things um, I wanted to say is a story uh, regarding birds three. So when Professor Maeda and I came uh, to Nepal, I was in Korea and Professor Maeda was in Japan, to Nepal in April 2017 to push for Nepal's first satellite we went to a lot of these government organizations. Uh, we went to the Ministry of uh, Science and Technology. We went to National Planning Commission. We went to Ministry of Communications. But at the end of the trip, uh, Professor Maida looked at me and said, you know, this is going nowhere. We, it was just good talk. Like everybody was happy that uh, something like this was coming, but nobody was taking tangible actions, right? So the word that I always remember from Professor Maida was get creative. How do we find creative ways to get us funded? And that has uh, had a profound impact on me on how I think and how I try to plan on for funds. So if you look at Birds 3, we were able to raise $175,000 um, uh, including tax, and that was for the uh, first satellite, Nepali Sat 1. Uh, that was a one unit uh, satellite, and it was a, in collaboration with Nepal Academy of Science and Technology built in Japan at QTEC. We also have a SANUSAT that was recently launched, and it's in the operation phase. That was about $90,000, that's what I've understood. And they did it self funded and also did some crowdfunding. Uh, right now, we are moving towards uh, the green project. So we have two projects going on, Dafe and Munal, which is a 3U and 1U respectively. Uh, and uh, it's been done through collaboration between Antriksha, our organization, NAST, and instead an organization in Thailand led by Dr. Palm, who's also the point of contact for UNICEF Thailand. And uh, right now, with uh, DAFE mission, we are in flight model stage, and uh, with Munal, we are in uh, the MDR phase. Munal is an interesting project because it's being built by the high school students. And uh, as you can see, we have, uh, we have to raise about $300,000 for this, and it's quite an interesting challenge. Because what if the government entity is not providing the funds that we need right now, right? So how do we raise that fund? That is a very important question. And that's, again, going down to getting creative. I think uh, this is, this is a, um, a formula that I've been using um, and we have been using to try to get funds. And um, if, you, if you can see here, what we realized and what uh, Sogun helped us out with was corporate social responsibility funds. Uh, what we realized was banks have to set aside 1% of their total profit, which comes around fifth, about $5 million, um, if I'm not wrong, $5 million. Uh, is it $5 million? I think $5 million, yes, $5 million. And uh, if we can get some banks to chip in, through the corporate social responsibility funds, we realized that we could actually raise some of that money. And um, we have been uh, fortunate to be supported by Sanima Bank, by Bank of Kathmandu, Garma Bigas Bank, uh, even insurance companies. So they have uh, given us a certain amount of money from their profits. What we have also done is a work to di diversify our portfolio, especially with site projects. We have been building ground sensor terminals and we've been working on unit with UNESCO to build science clubs all around the country. Uh, these are Pinker Lab clubs, which is basically maker spaces. And also we're working on satellite data analytics. So what, what it does is we, it allows us to have a portfolio to apply to all these um, 
NGO, NGO gov government, non-government funds, which are grants and non-grants based. And uh, if we can write uh, a good proposal, have all the documents ready and also have a proof of concept ready with a prototype that makes our proposal much more stronger. So that's what we've been working on, right? Um, another approach we, we have been using is a different crowdfunding website called Patreon. Um, what we do is we ask our Patreons to um, um, give us a certain amount of money every month, every month, not one time like GoFundMe, but they give us a certain amount every single month, right? So $10, $100, and $1,000. But with that, what we provide is um, top secret updates. So we provide mission patches. We provide even services for, uh, for coming to Nepal and then visiting our space systems laboratory. And all these perks that comes in with supporting, that is something that we, we can provide if they provide us the support. And we are actually online right now. If you want to support our project, it's also right there. Okay. And uh, we're also gearing up for a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, what we realized was just asking for money is not sustainable. And we need to have our own ways of generating funds, right? And uh, for that, we have created a number of products. So one of them is a paper sat, which is actually a uh, satellite made out of paper and plastic, which allows us to then, um, uh, which allows us to then generate some fun from there. We, people can paint on it. People can use it for all sorts of educational purposes. We have also been building up these kind of dummies, uh, which is, looks exactly like Nepali Sat One, which allows them to, uh, for us to use that as a way to earn profits. And uh, we have been building uh, HeptaSat inspired. Uh, ISAT inspired educational satellite, which is based on the Palisat one, but, but the, the product is developed in a way that we, we use the sensors that we can find in Nepal. And uh, we have a SustaCube satellite and a Safari version. This comes integrated and this comes disintegrated. So anybody who wants to just assemble themselves can assemble as well. So this will be uh, online very soon. We are working very hard night and day to make this happen. And uh, we are also looking into branding and advertisement. Uh, this is pre-product launch. So we've been going into the media, targeted media approaches where uh, social media influencers and also uh, very prominent figures like uh, Dr. Mahabir Poon, who's a Max SA winner. Uh, and uh, you know, if they can support us in, in ways to brand it, to put it out in the public, it really helps. But another way of branding we've been looking into is uh, trying to sort of get big companies in Nepal, big companies uh, which invest huge amount of money in advertisements. That's what we see. Like they spend money on hot air balloons. They spend money on um, on uh, videos, on social medias and for them, um, hundred thousand dollars isn't much. So if we can actually tell them to say, um, say that if uh, if you give us hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollars, then we can build a satellite in your uh, with with all the the branding that you require onto the satellite. Then perhaps that is a way to raise funds as well. So this is something that we have been uh, recently exploring and. Uh, Hopefully, I think uh, some companies would be interested. Uh, it doesn't take much time for us to create those renders. Uh, we use uh, their color combinations to make it attractive. Um, so what we also are doing is um, we have a number of programs parallelly running, right? But um, these can be expensive. And in order to reduce those costs, we collaborate with the school where we are implementing them. Uh, for instance, this was today, we were doing the PaperSat arts competition. And um, in that, we collaborated with Brankton School, which is the top school here. And then for the Tinker Lab program, we are working with Mahindra Bhawan School 
for the piloting for SustaQ, the our, our product, uh, we actually went to Kotang in a school, a school in remote place in Nepal. And uh, our high school satellite project is being based on Kashmir University High School, which provides us with um, with space, with furnitures, with all the things that we don't think we have to spend too much money on. But then they, if they provide the infrastructure, that's that's good for both parties. So we provide the manpower, they provide the infrastructure. And that's something we have been considering uh other places as well. For example, uh, Kathmandu University High School's Space Systems Laboratory is on towards the left, and towards the right you see a Space Systems Laboratory uh, inside Nepal Academy of Science and Technology. So uh, we, what we've been doing is uh, collaborating with the government to open our offices inside the government uh, buildings. So we don't have to pay for utilities or furnitures, but then we bring in the manpower, we train the human resource. So right now, all the interns are being trained at Nepal Academy of Science and Technology. And then once they reach a certain level, we take them to uh, Kathmandu University High School and then uh, deploy them there. Uh, because high school students require supervision, we need trained manpower in those cases. But with the savings we are doing, what we, we, we are planning to do is open up our own offices. We have recently opened our headquarters here in Kathmandu. This is our office space. And we are also opening our training center so that we can use that educational training program and have it more of a hands-on training program in the future. So that is all of these revenue generating ideas. Obviously, these take time. Um, so if you look at the, uh, the block diagram, the entire block diagram, what you see is once we have an idea, we try to build a prototype. But to build a prototype, you need funds and you need manpower. And uh, that's where uh, what we're doing is uh, we use our personal funds. Uh, we use a bit of soft, soft loans and also grants from certain parts, right? So from that, once we have a prototype, we can then, it's easier to do a pilot and then get a grant. And once we have that piloting done, we can then create a minimal viable product, which we test it out with the end user and we do this in an iterative way while we receive grants. And um, once we have that, we move towards mass production. So Secube is moving towards mass production, right? So we can look for pre-orders. Uh, money can come in from pre-orders for manufacturing and also equity-based or angel invested uh, money can come in to the organization so that we can do mass production. So if if we can generate that profit, that goes back to our primary goal of developing space infrastructure, developing satellites. And if you notice here, all the grants, certain percentage of grants and investments and profits all go towards our primary goal. But then to have this idea, if you notice it here, we start with an idea, right? And if we start from an idea, we need some kind of inspiration. So today's program, will provide that inspiration. I hope that this uh, meeting today will have all these ideas generated uh, from, from, from things or from sectors that we didn't think of. You know, uh, For example, if um, I'm from space sector, we wouldn't really think about f how banks are going to use satellite uh, imagery, how, how are birds going to be tracked from satellite. So all these ideas, if they can come to one place and be discussed, I think that can create an inspiration for an idea that can lead to profit generating work for uh, our space sector here in Nepal and in any other emerging countries. And the basic idea here is that if Nepal can do it, it can be done anywhere else. So uh, with that, I think um, without any 